Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Joe Alvarez back again today to talk to you about how to master your tracks, master your beats, if you have the third party plugins, the fancy ones, or if you are on a budget. So the first one I'm going to start out with is going into if you have the fancy plugins, the third party plugins, um, I'm going to show you how to master with that. And then I'm also show you how to master strictly with just logic plugins. So let's get right into it. I'm going to play a little bit of this beat and then I'm going to start to dissect the master chain. So there you have it. Um, I'm not going to play the whole beat, but that just gives you a picture of what we're working with. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to disarm everything and just keep the linear EQ because that's what I usually start out with. And the reason I start out with that is just to kind of clean up anything super low, about 23 hertz and down, and then take away anything from about 18 hertz and up, 18 kilohertz and up, just to get rid of some of that digital uh extreme brightness that we don't particularly want to hear and that's just going to give me a little more headroom going into my mastering chain the second thing i do i like to use this plugin from waves um, just because it gives the overall mix a nice little 3d depth and width to it a nice little analog warmth that you don't have um, if you're not using this plugin. So honestly, I just use the master bus 3d preset, which works fine for my needs. So I'm going to play this with this plugin on and I'm gonna play it with the plugin off bypass. <laughs> can hear that it's automatically gluing that mix together it's bringing a nice um a nice crunch to the mid-range but in a very subtle way where it's making the mix sound fuller it has a nice little edge to the top range without sounding harsh so it's giving nice clarity and a night and a nice sense of depth to your mix so essentially it's giving it an analog feel and then, no surprise, if you know about these plugins, you know these bad boys just work. The Isotope, Izone 9, uh, Ozone 9. So let me just take off everything here that I added. I started out with a vintage comp, just doing very subtle compression, just again to bring the overall volume of the track up a little bit and just to give it a little bit more glue. So I started out with the vintage compressor. And I have a ratio of about 1 to uh, 1.5. Tax is about 20 milliseconds and the release is about 50 milliseconds. And I have it on auto, auto game. bringing up the punch a little bit of the mix the, the low end is coming alive it has a nice analog characteristic to it and overall you're getting a nice balance because everything is being compressed in a very subtle way then i move on to the equalizer and here i'm processing it uh from the mid and side um instead of the the stereo so i'm coming to mid side and what essentially mid side does, it, it gives you the ability to control everything on your sides from the far right to the far left. And then when you go to mid, it's controlling everything in the middle of your frequency. So it doesn't matter if it's a stereo or mono signal. It's a, it's a little different than stereo and mono, but it's giving you more control of your frequency ranges. So in the side, I'm just boosting about... 26 kilohertz up at about 0.7 db so that's how 
subtle I am. I'm not doing anything heavy handed. It's just just slight boost everywhere on the chain. So overall, you're going to get a nice enhancement toward the end. And then on the mid, um, I have another little boost about uh, 0.5 dB, about 7,000 kilohertz and up. And then a little more uh, boost at a 450 hertz up to about maybe 0.5 dB. And then a low shelf at 0.4 dB from 216 hertz up, uh, 200, 216 hertz down. So let's see how that sounds. So again, you can hear is giving the mix a little more clarity and a little more separation and it's sounding um, just like a more cohesive piece just by these little subtle EQ movements. So then I move on to the exciter. The exciter, I'm also again process, processing it from the side and the mid um, controls. On the mid, I'm just controlling the low frequencies and the mid frequencies. So everything from about two kilohertz to about 267 hertz. I'm adding the retro algorithm and I'm boosting it up to about 3.4. So let's hear how that sounds on its own. Let's bypass it. hear that when I put that on it's again giving a lot more clarity to the mid-range percussive sounds so it's giving you a sense of analog warmth that's essentially what you're doing there and then down at the lower frequencies I have the analog al algorithm which is going to it's going to smear well smear is not the right word but it's going to give you a nice blanket of warmth on the low range of the low frequencies to just add that analog feel to it so let's see how that sounds. Bypass that. So it just comes alive in an ever so slight way. And then on the sides, the only thing I'm doing here is from 2K and up, I'm adding a little warmth to the high frequency range. So let's hear how that sounds. So if I bypass this, let's see how that sounds without the exciter. Now let's turn it on. It's just ever making those frequency ranges, the high frequency range, kind to get its separation and the mid to low frequency range is just gelling it nice and evenly and to give you a nice analog balance. And then I'm coming over to the imager just to give a little more um, width to certain frequencies. So here, I'm just I come over here to, uh, to Stereolize and I'm boosting band four up to about 32.9, boosting band three to 29. And as you can tell, I'm getting smaller and smaller as I go down on the frequency range. So 17.7 at the mid range. And then here I'm actually taking this down a little more and making it more mono. Um, as opposed to stereo, because you don't want the lower frequencies to be that stereo. So again, the imager is all it's doing when I apply it. It's giving a lot more 3D characteristic to the mix. It's separating the frequency ranges, 
nice. So now you're getting a much bigger picture of your mix. And it's just overall, it sounds better and just wider. And again, it's just very subtle, nothing crazy drastic. And then I went to the low end focus just to add a little focus um, to the mid frequency. Again, I'm doing the mid side. And this one's a little hard to hear, but it's just giving the low frequency range a little bit of a boost just so it can stick out a little more without being uh, too heavy handed. And then we're gonna move on to the maximizer. This is where you might wanna turn down your speakers a little bit because essentially once I turn this on, um, actually, you know what, let me start off slow and then I'll fade it in so I don't get too much drastic of a, of a big old hiccup there. So the maximizer is all you're doing is gonna limit everything and bring everything up to volume. And if you have a nice balanced mix, then this shouldn't be a problem. If your low end is off or you have too much frequency somewhere, then that's when you're going to start to notice it and it's going to sound harsh. It's going to sound muddy or it's going to just sound distorted. So here I have the IRC4 set to modern. And I left everything the same the way it comes defaulted. I have the ceiling set to 0.1 just so we can cut off everything before it gets to that zero dB mark. And then I'm gonna just start to lower the threshold. here is getting that RMS about minus 7 dB so it's, that's pretty that's pretty standard in the commercial realm um, and it's nice and loud without losing too much of the transients without losing too much of the low end so let's listen to that one more time <music> Nice and loud without being overly distorted and without sounding like I just clipped the living hell out of this track. Still has a lot of transparentness uh, to it and a lot of transients to it. So that's that in regards to the ozone. And then here, I just add a little bit exciter. It's crazy because I'm using, I for some reason, I love this Logic Exciter. I think it sounds really good, so I don't change it. Um, but that's the only stock plugin that I'm using here as, as regards to affecting the chain. So I just add the frequency range from 10 kilohertz up and I just put the harmonics to about 10%. So let's listen. So just giving a little bit more polish. And then I just put the L2 from uh, Fab Filter, Fab Filter Pro L2, um, just to give it a little bit more of um, maximization. So let me take off this oversampling. I might might have overdone it by putting on on uh, eight times. <laughs> nice and loud doesn't sound overly mashed up and we're going to check the meters to see what everything is reading up here So it's, it's about, let's see, let's go to the loudest part. So a little 
discrepancy because this is saying minus 7 dB and this is saying about 10 to 9, minus 10 to 9 dB. So I guess it's one you're going to believe more. Um, probably the ozone, I probably believe more than the these meters. But as you can hear, it sounds a nice commercial loudness. It sounds really good um, without being overly mashed up. I could probably get a little more loudness out of this. But when I put my beats online, I'm not overly trying to smash them because um, this that's not gonna for me. That's not gonna be the final mix if someone purchases it or if I work with an artist. Then obviously we're gonna remix everything with vocals in there. This is essentially just to get a nice standard loudness to your mix and a way that you could be able to do this all the time to have a nice cohesive standard loudness across your beat library or your music catalog. So. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're back to just a master chain with just stock plugins from Logic. So I got a good mix going, a good master mix, a good master with just mixing these plugins. So I'm gonna play this real quick so you can see what it sounds like with the um, stock plugins from Logic. So it sounds good, um, it sounds nice and loud, nice and punchy, still clear, still good mix. But as you can hear, it doesn't have that 3D-ness and that depth and separation that the other plugins provided. But I'm saying that to say this mix, this master still sounds good. It still sounds to commercial standards, commercial loudness, without sounding harsh, without sounding squashed to death, you're still gonna get a nice competitive sound. So. Let's start to break down what I did, it's much more simpler. This is the, the chain that I like to use, and particularly when I'm on my laptop, which is a little older, and I don't have the horsepower to, um, to run all those big boy plugins that take a lot of CPU. So I started out again with a linear, linear phase EQ. I'm rolling off the low end, rolling off the high end, doing nothing fancy in the middle. Then I hit it with a compressor. I have the ratio to about 2.1, the release to auto, and the attack about 50 milliseconds. And I'm just shaving off a little bit of um, the gain, so about maybe minus 3 dB. That's just going to give it a little bit more glue and gonna bring the overall volume up just a little bit. So moving on, going back to the linear phase EQ, just a whole different plugin that I put on there. I'm keeping it at stereo, I don't like to get too fancy with the mid and the side on this particular um, EQ, just cause I don't think it sounds as good as the ozone one. So I just keep it right, right, uh, pretty simple. I'm just dipping at around 250 Hertz and doing a little bit more of a boost that I would do on the ozone. That's because this this EQ is not as um, doesn't give it as much shine. You need a little bit more dB gain to give it that shine. So I did a high shelf, the typical smiley face um, curve that they talk about, and then did a boost, a, a low shelf of around 87 hertz. <music> Just giving it a little bit more balance. And I go back to the exciter. Everything this time is from 2800 hertz and above. Because again, um, I don't have the exciter plugin um, that I can manipulate each frequency differently. Um, I don't really have the stereo depth plugin that I can manipulate the frequencies differently using the stock plugin. So I got to make up with that with using this exciter and adding a little more um, that I would normally use. But if you hear, it's making that high frequency range come alive. So this is without it. And this is with it. 
Just, just making the the high frequency, the high mids and, and the high frequencies just kind of come alive and gives it a nice little crunch. Then I'm adding the adaptive limiter. And I have the gain up to about 7.6 and the ceiling, the out ceiling to uh, 0 0.1 dB. And the look ahead, I just left it at 50 milliseconds. So I'll add it in slowly so I don't kill your speakers. Sounds nice and loud. Let's see what the meters are saying. Cool. So I like to usually get my mixes up to like minus nine to minus eight RMS and about uh, minus 10 LUFS. And that's usually nice and competitive loudness. I can go a little louder, but I'll be compromising a little more. Um, and in my particular case nowadays, I don't particularly mix to compete with the loudness wars of uh, what hopefully is becoming the past. Cause I think we're a little bit past that stage. People are realizing that transients are good and transparent mixes are much better than mixes that are squashed to death. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. As you can see, there's two ways of doing the same thing. One result is a little better, but this result is not bad at all and is perfectly fine for all the beat makers out there who want to plug their beats up online and get a nice commercial sound without um, suffering from a low volume. So I appreciate you guys for watching. If you like what you're seeing, leave a comment. Peace.